Hi, I'm Lindsay Stevens. This is the Poetry and Yarn podcast. You can get the show notes for this episode with links to anything I talk about at www.poetryandyarn.com. Um, in order to know when new podcast episodes come out, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or find my Facebook page for Poetry in Yarn. So it's been a while. I have been um, kind of not on social media lately, and it hasn't been like intentional, like I'm trying to stay away. My life has just been kind of all consumed by this really exciting um, project that I can't tell you about yet. Um, But I will be able to tell you about it soon. And trust me, you're going to be just as excited as I am um, once I can tell you what I'm excited about. This is part of life. Um, Working in the crochet and knit industry is oftentimes I'm working on things and I can't tell people about them or I can't share them until they're done and completed, which is actually why on Instagram lately I've been um, posting pictures of like an English paper piecing um, flower that I did and I've hand applicated that to some fabric and I'm going to try hand quilting a pot holder and like I'm doing all this other non crochet knitting stuff because most of the crochet knitting stuff I'm working on right now I'm not allowed to share yet. But um, I wanted to talk about contract crocheting and contract knitting because a friend of mine asked me a while back she said you know what exactly is that and I just thought that would be a good topic to kind of explain. So sometimes as a designer or sometimes a yarn company or a yarn store owner needs a sample made of an eye of an item, um, either crocheted or knit, but they don't have the time or they don't want to do it themselves. So I've had this happen sometimes where I've got like three or four things I need to get done in a short period of time. So one of them, instead of making myself, I send off to a contractor. And the basic way that works is when a contractor and a designer at least work together, um, the yarn and the pattern are provided to the contractor and it's the contractor's responsibility to A, meet gauge, um, and B, make the item according to the pattern directions. And I mean according to the exact pattern directions. So if the pattern uses one type of decrease, that's the type of decrease that the contractor needs to use because the idea is to have a sample that is exactly representative um, of the pattern. And then when the contractor is done, they send the item back to the designer. And um, if all goes well, the contractor gets money. The designer has the item made without having to spend the time physically making it themselves. I would say with patterns, it's kind of like hit and miss what I'm able to send out and what I'm not. There are certain things that if I've made like a square in a stitch pattern for a gauge swatch, I can completely write up the pattern based on just that one square. There are other things I need to make myself because I want to play around with how certain aspect of it works and I want the ability to like rip out and redo and rip out and redo. Um, And you don't get that with a contractor. Contracting rates vary. And it depends on the size of the project, the difficulty of project, and of course, like the thickness of the yarn. So a lace weight or a fingering weight project is going to pay more than, say, a worsted weight or a bulky weight project. I would say it's kind of like 50-50 on who pays for the shipping um, back and forth. I've had times where the contractor pays. I've had times where I've paid. Um, It kind of depends on the whole overall process, but I would say the the thing that makes a contractor worth their weight in gold is when they can consistently hit gauge. Um, You probably don't think about it as being like a very difficult thing, but it really is. I I remember a couple of years ago, I was at the knit and crochet show and um, these two big names, Rita Weiss. And now I'm blanking on who was speaking with her. But Rita Weiss was saying that when they were looking for contractors, they would send out, all these people would apply, and they would send out a pattern for a simple square, and they would mention what the gauge has to be. And nine out of 10 of the squares would come back not to gauge. 
um, getting gauge, getting the right number of stitches and rows per inch is crucial. And that's what, like, once you find a contractor who can do that, you just never let them go. Um, because it's, it's a difficult skill and um, it's something that's really valued um, because you need a sample made to gauge. You do. Um, you need your size small sweater to actually be a size small sweater. Um, a lot of people don't realize that their gauge can switch depending on the situation. So the gauge you get knitting or crocheting at home on your couch is going to be slightly different than, say, if you're at your kid's baseball game. Um, so a contractor has to be very aware of that and make sure wherever they are working on the project, they are maintaining a consistent gauge throughout. So that doesn't mean, like, you make a gauge swatch, you measure your gauge, you're good to go, so you forget about it. No, that means, like, every couple inches in the project measure to make sure you're still at the proper gauge, that you haven't, like, loosened up because you're more comfortable with um, the stitch pattern or tighten up because, like, you know, something's going on and you're just kind of aggravated and upset. Um, that's the most difficult part. That really is like 95% of it. Every once in a while, if I have like a general fabric I'm looking for, but it doesn't have to be like right on spot, I'll tell my contractor, I'll say, make a gauge swatch, send me your gauge, and then I'll write the pattern to your gauge. So I'll use their gauge to write the pattern so it's easier for them to be able to crochet or knit the item according to the stated gauge. But yeah, so that's basically what like contract crocheting and contract knitting is. It's when someone wants a finished item, but they need someone else to make the finished item for them for whatever reason. Like let's say a yarn company has a pattern that's doing really well. Um, selling their yarn and they want to have three samples so they can send it out to, tr to trunk shows and stuff like that. That's how um, a lot of contract work happens. And um, if it's something you're interested in, you can um, start looking around, um, getting some practice. It's not, it's the quality of your stitches. It's the ability to follow um, patterns and written instructions. Um, to the T. It's also a communication issue. As a contractor, you have to be able to um, communicate with the designer. So if you hit a part of the pattern you're stuck on, you need to be able to email the designer and say, here's what I have. Here's my question. Here's a photo of what I've done so far. Here's how much longer I think this will take me. By the way, I expect to mail this out then. Always a solid thing when I get an email from my contractor, just letting me know the yarn got there. Like, that's great, you know? Good. So I know it's there, and I know you're starting, and I know that um, things are good to go. But, yeah, so it, it's a fun thing that some people do. I don't know anyone who does it to, like, completely support their household, but um, it's usually a good way to bring in some little extra cash, um, support your crocheting or your knitting habit. And that's the fun. So, um, yeah, contract crocheting and knitting is a nice way to earn a little bit of an extra side income. Um, once you've shown that you have the skills and a lot of it does work by word of mouth. And um, just seeing what, um, who someone can recommend and has had a positive and a good experience with. So yeah, contract crocheting and knitting, that's the lowdown. Um, as I said, big news that I can't share yet. So make sure and keep your eyes out online um, for the big news when I can share. I'm um, probably going to have another podcast next week, and then I'll be out again for a couple weeks because we'll be traveling on um, family stuff, our uh, summer family trip, which means I will be stopping at lots of yarn stores because vacation yarn totally doesn't count. 
and um, make sure to keep an eye on the blog over the next couple weeks because I've got several different um, books that I'm going to be reviewing and doing giveaways for. So that'll be a fun thing you can enter and maybe you'll win. Once again, I'm Lindsay Stevens. This is the Poetry and Yarn Podcast. Don't miss out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. See y'all next time.